Hey everyone, thanks for hopping on. We're gonna chat about inventory today and a few different ways that you can modify that. Um, lots to do uh, with you know, tying into inventory. So for example, um, purchase orders that we went over in another training, that can obviously affect inventory and it's a great way to check in inventory into the system. So anytime you've got a purchase order, um, and you click check in inventory, it's gonna add whatever was in that purchase order to your live inventory. So that's a very clean way to get new inventory into the system and really the ideal way. Um, but just to kind of talk about all the different areas you can view your inventory. Number one, when you edit search products here, if I go into advanced options, for example, I could just pull up a certain category. So let's say that uh, you just did a hand count on inventory of your pantry items. I would maybe want to choose just pantry items because those are the only ones I want to view right now. When you click search, there's my 11 pantry items. And you'll see from the search results, we could update our inventory levels right here. Um, so that's a great way to update just a quick batch of items that you just got a hand count on or a new inventory on, um, where you don't have a purchase order that ties directly to it. So that's, that's a good way for just a small batch. Um, let's say you've got a, a really large batch. Somebody went out and did a hand count of everything in the warehouse. You've got a thousand items you need to update. A lot of times the best way to deal with that is to import a spreadsheet. So, um, for example, if I go to export products here, I can choose the format ready for import and I can export all my products into a nice CSV um, format. When I'm looking at that CSV format, it's gonna have a hundred different columns, you know, product name, product SKU, um, all the different options you get set for that product. That spreadsheet you export here, you can actually pare that down to just two columns if you want to. You could have the column product ID, which is the unique identifier, or you could have product code, which is another unique identifier. And then the second column can simply be the avail column, which is your inventory. So you can literally you know, delete all the columns in that export spreadsheet, except for either product ID or product code, and then the avail column, which is your inventory level. And you can turn right back around and import that spreadsheet under the import products routine. And that will simply update uh, the inventory level for all the products you have in that spreadsheet. So if you've got a large batch of products that, that you just did a hand count on or that you need to update inventory on, or update pricing or any other field really, keep in mind you can always kind of pare that down to a two column spreadsheet, the unique identifier, and then the field or the column that you wanna update for all these. And it could be several fields, so you could be updating pricing here as well as the avail column, which is your inventory. Um, you can update you know, several, several all at once. But that's another great way to update your inventory. Um, you'll also see that under reports here, product reporting, and then the inventory report. This is another area that you could update inventory if you wanted to through this new quantity column. And this allows you to search on a certain date range or certain categories or product availability. Um, keep in mind in general, inventory is gonna decrement on the front end as people order. And if they modify those orders or they remove orders or they go on vacation, that inventory will be put back into play. So it's, it's dynamic on the front end there. Um, if if uh, you do have inventory turned on for a certain product, then the customer will be limited on the front end to ordering only up to that amount. So for example, almonds here, we've got inventory disabled, but if we turn that on, that means that once we were down to let's say two or six or whatever the number happens to be, the quantity drop down on the front end will be limited to that number as well. So customers won't be able to order more than that exact amount. So you saw how when I disable inventory tracking, it hides all those fields. That just means that this product will never go out of stock. It's always gonna show up and be available for purchase on that front end. If I do track inventory, then we've got our quantity and stock total. So this is how many we've actually got in the warehouse. So let's say 300 low limit in stock, the system's gonna shoot an email to us based on what you've got in company settings. You'll see that there's a spot where you can put in who the, the low limit email should go to. It would send us an email alerting us that this particular SKU had gotten down to 10. Um, so you know, 
that's something you want to be aware of is do you have inventory tracking turned on per product? Um, what's your low limit in stock? What's your total quantity, et cetera? So that's the basics of inventory. If you've got any deeper questions um, or want to know more about some of the other settings that we've got related to inventory, feel free to reach out to your personal trainer or to customer support. Thanks for hopping on today.